I know a lot of agency owners. Some of them, I grant you, are not doing great. They're struggling, they're, they're you know, having challenges. But almost all of them, almost all of the agency owners that I know who have an agency of 10 or more people and have maintained that over the last 10 years, they have way more money than I do. So I think that um, the worlds of entrepreneurship and venture capital, right? Sort of the, those subcultures, the startup world, um, which is you know prevalent in sort of technology entrepreneurship universe, uh, those have a strong focus and, in my opinion, an irrational bias toward product-based businesses and away from services. When the reality is that a service-based business can be a wonderful way to build a company and it does not have to be a separate thing from a product-based business. You mm. can have either, you can have both, you can have a little services and a lot of product, you can have a little bit of product and a ton of services and you can build a great company and it is foolish to arbitrarily say that one is worse than another. I think the only, you know, the only um, universe in which it truly makes sense to say one is worse than the other, and this is where the source, in my opinion, of the problem comes from, is if you're a venture capitalist whose job is to you know, put money into 100 companies, have 95 of them go bankrupt and you know, stop annoying you, have two or three of them hopefully become you know, unicorns or, or, or return a ton of money. Um, that that model does not lend itself well. That sort of um, you know one in a hundred model, two in a hundred model does not lend itself well to the services based business because services businesses tend to be profitable from the start and for the long term, but generally not always, but generally slower growing, and their exits are almost never in the public markets with an IPO, right, and almost never for you know, nine or 10 figures, which is generally what venture capital investors are looking for. Um, I think what's, what's really funny, Conrad, and what a, a lot of people, uh, especially entrepreneurs, do not understand is that I, I myself obviously have started, you know, started a product company, Moz. Yeah. Uh, Moz was up to, I don't know, 50 some odd million dollars in recurring revenue. Uh, when I left, it raised $30 million in venture. Um, I own 18% of that company still, something like that. I think there's a lot of people who assume, oh, well, Rand must have financial means, right? Like you, you must be wealthy. You must have some money. Surely you have a million dollars at least, and none of those are accurate, right? So what you what you need in the venture-backed world is a huge exit at scale, which is extraordinarily rare, even for companies like Moz that, you know, end up growing to tens of millions of dollars a year in revenue. Moz is profitable, right? It's kicking off, I don't know, $5 million a year in cash, but it's not like I get any of that, right? Mm -hmm. It just, it sort of sits there and hopefully the company tries to invest it and grow and find some way to get to a hundred million plus in revenue with a 20% growth rate so I can go public or maybe sell to somebody. Um, and there's, a, uh, there's, an, there's also a, a big misbelief that an agency won't make you money. And I will tell you right now, uh, I know a lot of agency owners. Some of them, I grant you, are not doing great. They're struggling, they're, they're you know, having challenges. But almost all of them, Almost all of the agency owners that I know who have an agency of 10 or more people and have maintained that over the last 10 years, they have way more money than I do. Mm. Right? So, hey, being the CEO and founder and majority owner of a venture-backed business might sound sexy, right? My agency friends are like, wow, you know, your business was 10 times bigger than mine. And I made 10 times less than you, friend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you think drives it? Like that it's, it's, it's still, you know, like kind of uh, like so skewed. Uh, the perception or the reality? 
mm, no, the, the the perception, like what's 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 being thrown out there. Because you said the reality is completely reversed. Um, yeah. Maybe not reversed, but it's a lot more like kind of similar. Like what's you know what's possible, what the the advantages, but you know. I think I think it's uh, mostly media coverage, right? Mm. So it's it's like it's media coverage, and it is the stories that get written. So, you know, the number of stories that are written about um, every successful startup that has an exit, or you know, who uh, whatever raises a ton of money, those stories get into Tech Meme and TechCrunch and the New York Times and the Washington Post writes about them and you know, whatever the chronic San Francisco Chronicle is writing about it and, and they're featured on top of hacker news and right. It, it pervades our knowledge about the startup ecosystem. I, I have never seen a story that's like owner of successful local digital marketing agency in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania made $6 million this year. Hmm. By the way, they made $4 million last year and she made $2 million the year before that. And she made a million dollars the year before that. Her net worth is now $18 million. She is now richer than 94% of all venture backed entrepreneurs over the last decade. <laughs> never, you've never seen that story. That story has never been told. And it makes sense, right? Agency owners don't, they don't need to go out and be like, I made a bunch of money this year, yeah, right? They, yeah. just, they just have their business and when it works, it works. And mm -hmm. you know when they have to reinvest, they reinvest. They, but they, they have no incentive to go, you know, uh, blasting that story. Venture capitalists, on the other hand, have a huge incentive to try and get hundreds of thousands, millions of potential entrepreneurs, people like you and I, you know, and and many many others, to start venture backed businesses, knowing that ninety five percent of us will fail and you know have crappy outcomes three or four of us in the, in the rest of those five will have maybe some good outcome, but it's not clear. Maybe we'll be kicked out of our own business and our stock will be taken away from us, right? We'll, we'll be the Eduardo Saverins of Facebook, right? And then one or two of us will do really, really well. Yeah. I see, I see. So, so what would be your, because I, I want people to also have as many takeaways as possible from, from, you know, uh, the, the, the podcast. Um, so what would be your kind of advice at this point in your career and in like with your knowledge, your perspective, your experience, uh, to up and coming, you could call it like entrepreneurs or people who are kind of looking to start some sort of the business. Like, how would you advise them to, to look at it? Like, what uh, they're gonna choose between like a, you know, a service, a, a product, uh, a consulting, uh, like what, how, how, what would be your advice to them? Yeah, uh, so I think you should pursue um, things that are at the intersection of, you have personal passion and interest, like you like doing it and you find it fun and rewarding. And you know, if, if that's an agency, like, gosh, I like, you know, building up uh, a services business and helping other people with their business. I love the relatively low risk of sort of, you know, my costs never really increase unless I'm doing more work, in which case I'm making more money. I can, you know, scale up and down as need be. I, I run my own schedule in a lot of ways. That's an awesome world. And if you're passionate about that and you have the skills to help people, amazing, wonderful. You should invest in that. If on the other hand, your passion is, gosh, you know, I, I really dislike consulting for whatever reason. So personally, right, Conrad, I, and I wrote about this in Lost and Founder a little bit. I liked consulting. I like the work of it, right? I like, you know, talking to folks like yourself and, and helping you with your business and like, oh yeah, let, let's talk about like your social media strategy. Let's talk about your email marketing setup. Let's talk about your content setup. Let's talk about your SEO. Let's, blah, blah, blah. Like, I like that stuff. Mm -hmm. What I hated about consulting was the sales. Mm, I hated yeah. trying to, con you know, I hated like one-to-one -one convincing people to use my services and I hated the retention selling as well. Mm. Um, in fact, I think I hated retention selling even more than initial onboard selling. What do you mean by retention selling? The process by which a consultant or an agency has to sort of convince their existing clients to stick with them and to re-up their contract. Ah, okay. Right. So keep spending money with them. Yeah. Right. So like, you know, we're at the end of a six month contract and I show you, Hey, we, 
you know, we've done some extraordinary things together and look, the, you know, the promise of the horizon is even this much better. And you're like, eh. El Dorado. (laughs) Yeah, I could probably do it myself at this point. And right. And so, and then it becomes a, well, if you, you know, if you stop doing work with us, then I have to go out and find two more clients, you know, to work with who will replace that money. So now I got to do more selling just gets, it gets really challenging, right? Mm. It's just a hard, hard, hard thing. And so um, I, I really dislike that process and therefore moved to the product business because the product business was something where uh, I didn't have to worry about selling or retention selling, especially self-service. Um, self-service software as a service, which is what Moz was. It, w- it was one of the early pioneers. And so we actually had a lot of struggle in terms of getting um, investors on board with that idea. But now it is a very, very well understood field. And SparkToro is also in self-service SaaS um, software as a service, which uh, works really well for me, right? I don't, ha- I don't have to sell any- anyone on SparkToro. Like you go to SparkToro, you try the product. It's free. We have a forever free account. If you like it and you want more of it, you just upgrade. You put in your credit card, right? Oh, it's 50 bucks a month. Great. Okay. Let me try that. Hey, I really like this. Okay. I'm going to go up to the 150 buck a month level. Fantastic, right? That I, I never have to sell you on it. The product sells you on it. So I like that a lot. And that is why, um, that is why I pursued that field. But Hey, that is not, uh, that does not make it right for everyone.